As the 19th century turned the halfway mark, the world found in its midst a husky young continental upstart, the United States of America. We were not yet a century old, just babes in the international scheme of things, but already we had calluses on our hands and hair on our chest. We were big and tough and growing in four directions. Men and mules and wagons traveled west in search of gold and land. To the north lay the vast Alaska territories, soon to come under our wing. In the south there was gold of another kind, white gold, cotton for the markets of the world. The east was spawning a huge merchant fleet, was rivaling London as a money center, and was soon to become the warehouse of our export products. We were rough and rich and getting fat as geese. Our soil could grow most anything. Our climate, practically perfect. We had mineral deposits beyond belief. The Comstock load came in and revealed additional millions in silver and gold. We poked a hole in a Pennsylvania mountain and tapped an ever-flowing stream of oil. We laid a cable in the Atlantic for communication east and from St. Joe, Missouri to Sacramento, California, rode the famous Pony Express to take care of the West. We fought a war amongst ourselves. Both sides lost, so we shook hands, made up, and went back to work. Our trading posts became busy little towns, and our busy little towns became great swarming cities. The war's reaction set in, and we faced a bleak Black Friday as our financial springs creaked and Wall Street wobbled. But we could take it. And in the same year, we accelerated commerce by completing our first transcontinental railroad, a man-sized job done the hard way. The wind-blown gateway to the west, hard-boiled Chicago, was gutted by fire and burned to the ground. But we rebuilt it, and a few years later celebrated long and loud the hundredth year of our freedom. We had arrived at a curious stage in our development. We had youth, ambition, and freedom. We had manpower, two oceans, great rivers, fish, game, land, timber, and our hills were bursting with ore. We were potentially the greatest nation on the face of the earth, but only potentially, for we needed one thing, power. Not the power to conquer other lands, but the power to convert and utilize the vast resources of our own. We had advanced on many fronts, yet we still lighted our way with oil. We expanded far and wide, yet traveled mostly on foot or by horse. The woman in the home provided her own power and knew precious little of luxury and creature comforts. To maintain our forward impetus, we needed a vital force, power. And just when we needed it most, a man of the people came forward and gave it to us. His name was... <laughs> Thomas Edison is best known, and rightly so, for freeing the world from the shackles of darkness with his electric light. But he went far, far beyond even that heroic venture. He gave the world the electric power which today vitalizes the forces of progress. He led the attack which made nature the servant rather than the master of men. And in his original library at West Orange, New Jersey, and at Henry Ford's memorial to him at Greenfield Village, the new generation sees visible evidence of his many services to humanity. The early models of Edison's dynamos were unprepossessing objects, but they changed the tide of civilization for upon them are based all the huge electric giants which generate the energy of modern industry. Edison brought not only light, but music and laughter into the home with the phonograph. He created the component parts of what resulted in radio. Note the similarity of his microphone to today's. His effect lamp is still the basis for the heart of radio, the tubes. He relieved the tedium of laborious domestic hours with his electric motor, utilized in home electric appliances. He conceived the systems of wireless telegraphy, enabling ships at sea to contact stations on shore. Our methods of communication were practically primitive until the work and genius of Edison, along with that of Bell, made the telephone a commercial possibility. The Edison storage battery resulted in a life and labor-saving unit used today in beacons for planes high above the earth, eyes for miners way beneath it, in safety signals, fire alarms, and marine lighting and power.
Mr. Edison's favorite credo appeared everywhere. In this pleasant room where he did much of his work with his charming wife as his best friend and severest critic. In his chemical laboratory, which is still preserved, the scene of countless conquests over nature. And in his machine shop, where he labored with his faithful assistants to bring forth such history-making creations as the universal stock ticker, automatic telegraph systems, the edaphone, sockets, fuses, switches, meters, plate glass, the mimeograph machine, synthetic carbolic acid and benzol, the improved typewriter, electric locomotion, and countless other innovations crystallized from 1,200 patents granted the great man. The present day colossus of entertainment, motion pictures, is another brainchild of the gifted inventor. Conceived by Edison with simple cameras like these, he created two of the world's first movie stage, which revolved to capture the rays of the sun. And through his original projectors, Edison presented the first silent epic, The Great Train Robbery, a rough and ready saga, jam-packed with action. It is said that when the valiant heart of Thomas Edison stopped beating, that of the old clock in his library stopped at the same moment, 327. But the heartbeat of his great work has never stopped. It is timeless, providing constant inspiration to the youth of all lands, in whose hands rests the responsibility for future benefactions for mankind. Thomas Edison came into a world without light, without power, without the industrial wherewithal for a full and rich sustenance. He left behind him a greater, finer world, infinitely enriched by the products of his fertile mind. Today, wherever there's light and an ease in living, wherever there's power and force and progress, wherever the smoke of industry reaches skyward, there too is the spirit of Thomas Alva Edison, servant of mankind.